appreciate if anyone that maybe hasn't filled one out, if you wish to speak, please fill that out. It helps staff when it comes time to get our records put together and spellings of names and spellings of names and, and items like that. So I'd appreciate the yellow card filled out just for the help of staff. And then um, I want everyone to be respectful of one another. I know this is a really passionate topic for a lot of people and I want to see respect from both sides. I don't want to see name calling or anything like that. That's not, that's not what we're here for today and it won't be tolerated. And then if you have any written comments that you wish to uh, provide to Suzanne, if you have it, please provide that to the uh, recording secretary. And also today I wanted to let everyone know I'm gonna exercise my discretion of, it's gonna be a three minute limit for everyone, cabs included, cabs, groups, anyone, it's three minutes. There's a timer on each of the, the microphones there. I believe that the uh, yellow light comes on with one minute left. And at three minutes, I would appreciate that you wrapped up and finished. And we also have the two mics set up and there's a bunch of comments. So please come down and have, while one person's speaking, the next person be ready to go on the next microphone. That for timeliness so that we can get, get through the comments today. And I believe that is where we're ready to go. So we'll start with public comment here in Las Vegas. First person, please. And please state your name for the record. My name is Marilyn Benoit. It's spelled B-E-N-O-I-T. Go ahead. I've lived here since 1975 and yet my entire life I've had desert tortoises and currently I have one which is the right protocol for a pet desert tortoise. His name is Winnebago and he's 75 years old. He's a marvel. I know we have sort of a prejudice or bias toward mammals in most society and most wildlife groups but I happen to be fond of all animals. There's a few I don't like. I'm here to say that I am absolutely appalled that we allow people to take hundreds of thousands of animals after they die a horrible death or they're ca captured and maybe sent abroad so a teenager in Berlin can have a pet lizard or somebody in China can make a real lizard watch strap. I am horrified because I moved to Nevada partly because of the wild open spaces and I've seen tremendous loss of habitat through development and wildfires and I resent the fact that we're losing one of our resources, our reptiles and all the other animals killed along the way in traps and in other ways in the collection of, of reptiles. So I'm simply here to say that reptiles are wonderful and I would like you to consider them a resource. And I looked on the website and I noticed there was nothing about conservation of reptiles listed as a, as a bullet item to go to. And I was rather surprised. So just consider reptiles are important and think about rep reptiles and what they go through along with all the other animals that are killed in collecting animals or not checking where they're supposed to be collecting. And think of, you know, I couldn't help but think of them when I saw all those people trying to dig survivors out in Mexico because no water, no food, a slow and painful death. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chair, Commissioners, Jana Wright for the record, resident of Clark County. Uh, my comments are very brief. I've heard a presentation by the department today that I think was just very balanced and I appreciate their effort in presenting the data to the commission and to the public. And as a member of the public, I think doing nothing and letting the status quo go forward is not an option. And it's apparent to me, in my opinion, that a total ban is in order. So thank you, Commission. Thank you, Ms. Wright. My name's Bob McKeever. I'm a uh, retired park ranger and an avocational herpetologist. I, uh, I'm also one of the citizen scientists volunteers that helps uh, the department gather uh, data on reptile populations in the state. And uh, my comment 
today is just to reaffirm the email that I sent to all the commissioners before the Minden meeting. I was one of those that helped clog up your email inboxes, I'm afraid. At any rate, my point is simply that uh, I would prefer to see a more equitable access to wildlife by the all citizens rather than a select group being granted greater access to larger numbers than anyone else. And I would also be, like to get on the record as saying that at some point I would like to see the commission address with the department a requirement for a license for anyone who collects a reptile, hobbyists like myself and others. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Reese. No. For the record, Mike Reese, Clark County Cab. Um, our cab deliberated this for three and a half hours. We got two items done on Tuesday at our cab meeting. This one we took first, took three and a half hours. <clears throat> our end verdict came up as a six to nothing unanimous, uh, but we had split votes before, so we kept doing new motions and stuff. Came up six nothing to create a regulation for quota and seasons. We did not discuss the amount of quota. We did not discuss the season times or anything on that. So it is quite a push to get it to a six to nothing uh, to go to create a regulation. Now I'd like to take my hat off and put my own hat on and, and talk about the data. We didn't have the data you're seeing here at our cab, but I gotta tell you, at looking at this data, it's a data on, on collector's behavior. We don't know how many clutches were done in any certain year. I mean, we know about the reptile itself, but tell us, did we have droughts in collection? Did we have uh, recruitment rates that really dropped down? We don't know what total population is. They're based on the population off of the habits of the collector. Now, I'm sitting here wondering, well, if that collection rate went all the way down to one collector, and that one collector still caught 2,000 reptiles, does that mean we're in a decline in the population? No, it's in a, we're in a decline of permittees. So in this state, we've got less than, I believe right now, less than 10. I don't know the exact number, it might be nine. But I would like to see data on the reptile itself. I'm hearing, well, you know, when it gets cold, they go into kind of a, uh, a hibernation period, and I'm hearing them talk about, well, that's when we want you to go in and collect them because the seasons of April to July, they're out and about. We don't want you collecting them then because we call that the breeding season. They breed all the time. So I think it's preposterous to tell them, go in while they're hibernating and go collect them, will you? I mean, do you know what the news would talk about? Hey, we're going into you know, hibernation period and we're starting to collect the animals? No. Let's do it while they're out and about. It's the same way thing we do with our, our, our big game. I'm appalled at the amount of time that's associated with reptiles. We've got the largest decline in our state on mule deer. It's not even on a radar screen. Re mule deer have a higher decline rate than what our reptiles do right now, and our meetings are being taken up by the reptiles. That doesn't mean reptiles aren't important, but what's important to the sportsmen and stuff of the state is putting the food on the table. That's our big game status, and right now mule deer is in a decline. I would love to see on our next agenda an item to discuss what can we do, how, why are we having a big decline, because this decline's running into decades. It's not a couple of years, it's a lot. These guys are bringing data over two, two or three decades in on the reptiles. I wanna see that type of effort put in our mule deer. I haven't thank seen that. I've been in the state for 45 years. Thank you, Mr. Reese. Thank you. My name is Linda Faso. I live at 34 Congressional Court here in Las Vegas. Good morning, commissioners. I appreciate you hearing my comments on this very important issue. I am asking you to permanently ban the commercial collection of reptiles from our desert. Our neighboring states do not allow unlimited collecting of these fragile reptiles, and neither should we. Soon, our desert will be stripped of most of these beings that have a right to live there as nature intended. It not only disrupts the food chain, but severely impacts our ecosystem as well. Fewer than 10 individuals are licensed to take these reptiles from our desert, 
It has been reported that over 420,000 reptiles have been captured since 1986. We can only imagine how many more were actually taken. There are plenty of breeders who deal in the reptile trade to keep this industry going. There is no logical reason to let this practice continue. These reptiles belong to all of us, and I'm asking you to do what the public expects of you, to protect them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paso. Good morning. My name is Kobe Shaw, spelled K-O-B-B-E-S-H-A-W. I live in Clark County, and I represent Tortoise Group. While Tortoise Group focuses on the desert tortoise, our mission includes protection of the Mojave Desert as a whole. I'm a resident of Clark County, and I have been so for 12 years. Not so long ago, the exact spot on which I live was populated by desert flora and fauna. It is too easy to say that commercial development in any form or any collection methods is wrong altogether, and arguably a false statement. Most of us in this room live in areas that were open Mojave Desert just 50 years ago. However, it is incumbent upon us as the newcomers to this area to retain some semblance of sustainability. Reptile and animal depletion is a bad thing. Tortoise Group was formed in 1982 to bring awareness to the issues surrounding the desert tortoise. By 1991, the desert tortoise had been listed as a threatened species federally, and numerous laws within the state surrounding pet tortoises began to take shape. While habitats in the wild have been studied and monitored for over 30 years, in 2017, the desert tortoise still remains on the threatened species list. In other words, we sent 30 years and millions of dollars to fight to keep just status quo on one species. And why? Because of collection. People went to the desert and picked up desert tortoises and brought them home. We all know somebody that's lived here for a while whose grandpa would go out into the Mojave and pull out, come back home with his pickup truck and bring 30, 40 tortoises back in. We know the ramifications of this. As the official spokespeople for the desert tortoise, Tortoise Group urges the Board of Wildlife Commissioners to take a proactive role in native species protection and not allow us to find ourselves in a similar situation with countless other species within our lifetimes. The character and integrity of the commercial coll collectors is not being questioned here. The unlimited collection of any species for any commercial profit is a slippery slope. The data shows clearly that numerous other species are in a trajectory similar to that of the desert tortoise. We're in a fortunate position to be able to see this data before individual species begin to die off. Please take a moment and consider the years of issues, litigations, millions of dollars spent on recovery and sustainability of the desert tortoise. Please use the desert tortoise as an example of what not to do. Please do not allow the unlimited commercial collection of any species in our precious Mojave home. Thank you, Mr. Schott. And can we hold the applause? We'll just keep it. Go ahead, sir. My name is Wayne Bliss. I'm here for myself. My comment will take two parts. The first part dealing with the uh, rigorous and robust analysis of the data that we've seen. Uh, and which was also reviewed, but uh, I'd like to point out that the data set is inadequate for making any kind of a scientific conclusion from this. The sample is too small, and, uh, and we have no uh, real basis for how it was collected and was it collected by, by people who uh, were uh, actually part of the study. So I would caution you not to make a decision based on this information um, that you would call a scientific conclusion. I don't think a good statistician would go along with that based on the quality of the data set. Number two, um, I talked this morning with the curator of reptiles at the Detroit Zoo, who is also the species coordinator for all the zoos in this country, and I posed the question to him was he in favor or not of uh, commercial collection of reptiles in this area? 
and his opinion was no. I asked why, because of his knowledge of those species that have been studied uh, that are in decline, that, that in general desert species of reptiles are in decline. Uh, based on that and my own gut feeling, I would uh, support then a ban on commercial collection. Thank you. Uh, Vicki Warner for the record. Um, I want to start off by saying I'm a little frustrated with being at the CAB board and here seeing, hearing that data from collectors was good one minute and not good the next. So it's just parts and pieces are getting used. Um, it's either collection or not. To me, um, I send in information to Endow all the time for what I do. And I know that they use it for the betterment of the whole state, the betterment of the animals, and to catch people that are doing the wrong thing. I understand that. And I think that the collectors probably did the same for the same reasons. They care about these animals too. Um, but it sounds like to me right now that the hobbyists, it's fine to collect. Um, and I believe, I mean, I've called not to throw Department of Wildlife under the bus, but I've called a couple of times and had a couple other people call for um, what that is. And it's anywhere from they don't know to two, two limit a year, which is what I heard today. Um, but two limit of what? Per species? Um, per person? Per household? Um, I have people in my area that have 13 kids. One, each kid collects one per year, that's 13. Is that per thing? So, I mean, I'm all for putting limitations on this because obviously it's became a concern, but limitations all around. I mean, just because you're making money off of it shouldn't make any difference if you're not. So a hobbyist can still collect it. But if you have a thousand hobbyists here and they collect nine in a year, that's the same as the data that I heard at CAB board that the commercial collectors collected. So if that's so important and we're losing that many, then look on the hobbyist side too. And I'm, I'm not saying either side are bad or good, but if we're really looking at the animals, look at both. I've never been for banning because I think once you ban something, it's so hard to go back. Um, limitations, stronger limitations. I know that that's hard for enforcement, law enforcement. I feel for them, but why aren't we looking at ways to give them more people? because um, it's not just here that you're going to find it. Um, there's still people out there with all the limitations and regulations that we have for big game that are still breaking the law. So I just ask that you guys really look at that and don't just go straight for banning because it's the easier way to go. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ms. Warner. My name's Mark Transu. Uh, I'm a member of Las Vegas Woods and Waters. I lived in this state for over 50 years. I hunt, I fish. I go out in the desert a lot. Uh, as far as the reptiles are concerned, I feel as though you should let them still collect because to me there's not really a lot of data, official data on correct counts. They're speculating. Uh, they base their averages over 87 people, commercial guys, over years and there's only the most we've ever had in the state is 27 and we only got nine now. So uh, another thing, I mean, we're spending all this time, like Mr. Reese said, we're spending all this time on the reptiles, and we don't know how many there are. These little critters were here a million years before man set foot on the earth, and they'll be here after us if the earth doesn't blow up. The people that go out and actually collect them as a hobby, no one regulates them. I collected them for my kids, and when I grew old, uh, grew older and d interested, I let them go. Nobody says anything about that. What's to prevent us from going out and bringing home a fawn deer so the kids can cuddle with it for a couple of days and then set it loose again? Nothing. So, in my opinion, I think you got to keep it the way it is and don't close it down because you're putting people out of business. Although there is not much money coming in, it's still 
a commodity. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Anula Wildridge. I'm a resident of Clark County. So we've determined that, that some of the species indigenous to our state need to be protected rather than ex, uh, exploited. And as has been already mentioned by experts and expounded upon, there are long-term consequences to the ongoing exportation of our reptiles. According to a local reptile rescue group that has over 25 years of collective experience, this exportation is also a wasteful use of life because most reptiles kept as pets often do not do well or survive as the majority of pet owners are unfamiliar with their unique needs and proper care protocols. Unfortunately, we'd, we've not exactly done the best job of wildlife management uh, resources in a responsible manner compared to our neighboring states. And re restrictions are not enforceable and not always honored as we've seen by the use of illegally set pitfall traps. So I support prohibiting the collective um, I'm sorry, the commercial collection of reptiles, and I encourage you to prohibit it as well. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, my name is Phil Medica, retired wildlife biologist, herpetologist. I've lived here over 50 years and done field studies that document density, reproduction, uh, seasonal activity. Uh, one young man said they breed all the time. That's not true. They breed mostly March through July and then put on fat bodies in the wintertime, in the fall and winter, so to survive hibernation. That also ensures reproduction the next spring, those fat bodies, that ensures it. Collecting adult lizards and snakes at the same time in the spring and summer before they are breed or before they have the offspring, like most rattlesnakes have live young, those are produced and usually come around about mid-August to late, sub to late September. So for the most part, collecting these animals in the springtime during the reproductive season is counterproductive to reproduction. These animals live in, in populations that are long-lived. Some live as much as seven or eight years. Some of the records that we kept on mark recaptured animals, leopard lizards, 10 years, whiptail lizards, eight years, Zebra tail lizards, four to five years. Chukwalas, probably over 10 years. We don't have specific data there. Horned lizards, seven or eight years. I pointed out in my email to all of you that horned lizards are infested with parasites. Pinworms, they also have tapeworms. They have cestodes. They have all kinds of parasites. These are being shipped who knows where. I don't know if you all realize that, but that may be against the regulations of where they're going too, maybe even Europe. So you should consider that. The impacts of roads, roads are a sink. The animals that come and live on the rocks along roads are easy to collect. But once they're collected, they come from the habitat around there and fill it back in, depleting the native populations. So in the long run, uh, commercial collecting has detrimental population dynamics to the animals that survive in the desert. I just want you to keep all that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, hello, my name is Lawrence Wilson. Uh, I'm a longtime resident of Las Vegas twice. Um, when I was a kid, uh, from my house, I could see Caesar's Palace straight across. I could see the airport. Um, I've been in the deserts all around there. I've collected a lot of reptiles in my childhood. and. Uh, it's not the, it shouldn't be any, um, the reptile should have a position um, as far as uh, the commercial people are concerned and the uh, collectors are concerned. Um, there should be a, a, a medium between the two. The collectors should, uh, and the commercial people should get together and try to repopulate the area with the reptiles if they're collecting the reptiles. Um, if they have, uh, I, I noticed that Earlier, they said that there was a, a, a law against propagating the animals, but if you're collecting them commercially, the end result should be to domesticate the animal and to um, repopulate the areas with those animals, um, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they, uh, the end result for the reptile is that it's going to be dead. I mean, in the end, it, whether a kid gets it or... Um, 
you know, that's what you, usually what the what happens is the kid gets it and the kid plays with it and the kid forgets about it and then it dies. That's what happened when I was a kid. There really wasn't too much uh, commercial collection back then, but uh, you know now there is, and I'm sad to see in the past 30 years that no protections have been um, uh, designated for any reptiles except the desert tortoises. Um, I collected skinks, which nobody's even talked about them, whiptails, um, horned lizards, desert iguanas, uh, zebra tails, collared lizards, sandies, all of that. And uh, I mean, they all have the souls and they all have, they're all living creatures. Um, to compare them to a mammal and to hunting and killing a mammal, I think is unfair to the reptile because the reptile, nobody's hunting them for food it's just for collection and for pleasure. Um, but you should uh, limit, at least limit it um, somewhat. They shouldn't get unlimited access, I don't think, because it's just, it's just wrong. And uh, um, the interior of Las Vegas, from where I'm from, has been built up. And there's many little deserts where there's reptiles in those deserts that are just waiting to die or waiting to get run over by a steamroller or dug up or, you know, like where you're going to put the stadium for the Raiders. I'm sure there's a lot of habitat out there. And there's a lot of reptiles there. You should work on an interior plan where the commercial uh, people, they go to the interior and they first get these lizards out of the interior and maybe populate these lizards and um, distribute them thank to the outsides. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. You're welcome. You have a nice day. My name is Mike Swink. I'm a professional herpetologist working in reptile biology for the last 20 years, uh, resident of Las Vegas. And I'm here to suggest to the commission a consideration of the uh, ending of commercial collection in Nevada. I think if you review not just the data that's been presented uh, to this commission, but also in other states, uh, looking at declines in reptiles, <coughs> uh, it's been happening across their ranges, and it's compelling uh, that there are impacts, uh, not just from collection, but it's, it's an additive effect. There uh, is the consideration of development, especially in Clark County, uh, when something like a large housing de development goes in, they grub the land, and uh, the native reptiles that are on that land are taken. Uh, that's a large amount of mortality. You know, small mammals, birds can escape the construction area, but um, these are a vulnerable species in that regard. And when they are collected on roads, it's not just 100 feet off of a road. You have to consider, uh, and I cite the county again, because it's, it's a braided network of roads that can be sampled for reptiles. You look at the total area, and it's a lot of land, um, and these impacts are additive. We can't uh, stop every one of those mortalities from occurring, and it's gonna happen, and they're, you know, they're preyed upon naturally as part of the, the desert ecosystem, but uh, this is something that we can actually have an effect on. Uh, there was a statement that if you ban commercial collection that you can't go back. Well, if you depopulate, our native state resource of reptiles, then you can't go back. Um, so consider the long-term implications of these impacts, please. Uh, I go out in the, in the desert with my son, six years old, to look, and find for, uh, look for and find native uh, reptiles, lizards, snakes, and I wanna enjoy that with my kids, and I want them one day to uh, enjoy that with their children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swink. Jean Perry Jones. I've been a resident of Nevada um, since 1975, and I would urge you to prohibit the commercial collection of all reptiles. You are the gatekeepers. We are the stewards. We all have to be responsible. Our limited Nevada collection has already resulted in the, quote, significant decline in these populations of reptiles. Reptiles are slow to reproduce and can't legally be allowed to reproduce if they're caught. So therefore, a reptile removed is the ultimate death sentence for not only that animal, but also any 
progeny it's going to have. It's not going to be able to reproduce. We're living in an age of Anthropocene where half of all species are going to be extinct by the end of this century. Let's be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Once extinct, it's hard to go back. Logistically, there's no reliable way to police the taking of reptiles, and there is non-verifiable self-reporting of collecting of the takings. To remove reptiles is also to remove part of the whole ecosystem. Reptiles, of course, eat insects and rodents and help keep down things such as Zika virus, uh, so let's help our own natural controls of such species by allowing reptiles to survive in their own environment. And then there's a whole uh, thing about invasive species, whether we're exporting or importing species and their parasites. You have examples globally of, of when you export species and uh, invasive species such as boas in Florida, monkeys in Hawaii, foxes in New Zealand, cats in Australia. It has devastating consequences on the other species in the area. So don't make Nevada and its critters part of the problem. Um, as Commissioner Reese testified, there is no good time to collect reptiles. On a walk in the desert, citizens expect to see a natural habitat with cactus, creosote, lizards, reptiles, jackrabbits, and other critters. This is our joy as Nevadans. Don't take away our joy. These reptiles belong not just to a few hunters and collectors, but to themselves and to their community and to our community and to all of us. Please prohibit the commercial collection of reptiles. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Good morning. Um, my name is Kimberly Jenkins, and I'm a principal environmental specialist with the Clark County Desert Conservation Program. The reason why our organization is interested in this issue today is because we are responsible for overseeing regional compliance with the Federal Endangered Species Act in Clark County, and we believe that without a significant revision of current commercial collection regulations, that further declines in reptile populations may result in the listing of a species under the Endangered Species Act. So today we respectfully urge the commission members to adopt regulations that would either ban or significantly limit commercial collection of reptiles and establish annual limits on the number of species that may be collected. Species population declines can have significant economic consequences for communities and Clark County understands very well what a potential listing could mean for our community. The 1989 listing of the desert tortoise under the Endangered Species Act provides an excellent example of the disastrous economic consequences of a federal listing. When the tortoise was listed in 1989, a complete moratorium on nearly all new construction was instituted immediately because it was now illegal for construction to impact desert tortoise habitat without a permit from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It was nearly two years before the necessary permit was issued, and during this time, developers were required to consult with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service on a project-by-project -project basis and also comply with a lengthy and costly list of mitigation requirements. Construction is a pivotal industry in southern Nevada, but it could be critically threatened by another species listing. We understand that the humane use of animals has been an essential part of many cultures for our collective history, but the harvesting of species must also be ecologically sustainable if it can persist. I would also like to address a couple of comments that we heard earlier this week at the Clark County Wildlife Advisory Board meeting from opponents of limits on commercial collection. At that meeting, we heard from several individuals who argued that commercial collectors are by and large a lazy group who will not generally venture more than 100 feet from the edge of a road to collect specimens. They argued that because commercial collectors are remaining close to roads, that they could not possibly be having a large effect on reptile populations. I apologize, I thought the overhead viewer would be available, but I have two maps that I'd like to submit to the commission for your examination that show the falseness of these claims. These maps show the extent of roads that are inventoried on BLM-administered lands in southern Nevada in areas that are popular. Is it available? Okay. So um, those red lines are the extent of roads that have been inventoried on public lands in southern Nevada. And so this is the Ivanpah area, one of the areas that was highlighted as being popular for collectors. Um, another example some of the road networks that are uh, north of the Las Vegas Valley, uh, near Valley of Fire, Moapa, and also the Apex area. So these are just two examples that highlight that the road networks in Southern Nevada are very extensive and that um, 
merely staying within 100 feet of a road does not necessarily mean that reptiles would be experiencing limited impacts. Another frequent comment. Thank, thank you, Ms. Jenkins. Oh, I'm sorry, your time sorry. is up. If you would submit your written statement and uh, the maps yes. to Suzanne, that we would okay. get it into the record. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Chip. I'm Chipper J, representing Nevada Sportsman Unlimited, and we are fully against any type of ban of commercial reptile collecting. We believe in keeping the long-standing traditions here in Nevada when it comes to outdoor recreation and banning and such activities is unacceptable to us. If the reptile population is decreasing as rapidly as being claimed, why are we not taking a look at the bigger picture and taking a look at other things that might be causing this decrease in population, like habitat loss and the predation of the reptiles? There are many predators out there that prey on reptiles, including the protected hawks and ravens in the state of Nevada, along with coyotes and foxes. With recent trapping regulations being restricted, the coyotes are more frequent around here, in Clark County especially, because trappers are giving up going out and trapping them because of the harsh regulations. But other than the native threats, we have a bigger threat in Clark County alone and it's a domestic predator, and that's the feral cat. Studies have shown in the U.S. that an estimated 1.4, 3.7 billion birds, 6.9 to 20.7 billion mammals, and 258 to 822 million reptiles are killed every year by feral cats. There's an estimated 70 mil million feral cats in the U.S. If you do the math, that's 122 to 360 animals killed per year, per cat. Now, if you look at the reptiles, that's three to 11 reptiles killed per year, per cat. Now, Clark County alone, according to the Las Vegas Valley Humane Society, we have an estimated 200,000 feral cats in Clark County alone. If you do those numbers, that's the potential of 600,000 to 2.2 million rep reptiles killed in Clark County alone per year. That's more than the 30 year history of recorded uh, data of the commercial reptile collectors. Another uh, issue is habitat loss. As stated by the Clark County Desert Conservation Program, there is a fee that's given to developers who decide to develop land in here, and that fee is $550 per acre. But when you look at where this money goes, zero dollars goes to relocating any reptiles in these developing areas. Why are we not doing more to go out and protect these species, including mammals and birds and plants there in these areas, and try to relocate them if our populations are diminishing? To put the blame on nine collectors here in the state makes no sense. We need to look at the bigger pictures here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Patrick Donnelly. I'm the Nevada State Director with the Center for Biological Diversity. We support a permanent ban on the commercial collection of reptiles. I presented you with a letter from 48 scientists uh, with masters or PhDs in wildlife biology and herpetology, uh, all of whom support a permanent ban. This list includes some of the most prominent minds in herpetology from the University of Nevada, Reno, Nevada State College, Harvard University, UC Berkeley, the Max Planck Institute in Germany. This has attracted worldwide attention from scientists. And they are unanimous that they agree the only solution is a permanent ban. I also want to highlight that some of our legislators have come out on this issue. And uh, there could be interest in pursuing legislation to provide remedy for this issue. And I know how much everyone loves the legislature mucking around in Wildlife Commission business. I also want to <clears throat> discuss consequences for not acting. Something we've heard expressed by Endow and Clark County and others are concerns about listing under the Endangered Species Act. And it's no secret that my organization, that's, that's what we do. We pursue listing for endangered species. Uh, we just petitioned for a toad in northern Nevada. Um, just this week, a bird, a fish, and a turtle were all listed um, uh, due to our petitions elsewhere in the country. And uh, our most recent settlement agreement with Fish and Wildlife, we've listed 188 species, uh, thanks to our petitions. Uh, so this is what we do when we see species in perilous decline. 
Now, there's no evidence that we're at that point yet. I think there's agreement on that. There's no petition in hand waiting to be submitted. Uh, we are seeing the early warning signs of species decline that could lead to a scenario 10, 20 years down the line uh, where those species need to be protected. Typically, when we pursue listing, it is not because there is a single factor contributing to the decline. There is always a multiplicity of factors. We know that reptiles face threats from climate change, disease, and other factors. How terrible would it be if 10, 20 years from now, there's a species in perilous decline, we petitioned to list it, and one of the reasons is 50 years of unsustainable commercial collection. Uh, we have a chance to stop that right now uh, by, by preventing uh, species declines that could ultimately result in these species needing these sorts of protection. Your wildlife managers agree, the scientific community agrees, hundreds of Nevadans agree. Wildlife policy should be created for the benefit of the people of the state of Nevada, not for the benefit of fewer than 10 commercial collectors for whom this is not a financially lucrative operation by their own admission. Uh, there is consensus. The only, uh, the only remedy to this situation is a permanent ban on commercial collection. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donnelly. Uh, for the record, my name is Ryan Warner. I'm public. I'm also a Nevada consumptive user and a sportsman. Um, I do not support any sort of ban to nine collective uh, licensed reptile collectors here in the state. I grew up here for 44 years. I had three boys, all teenagers. And between my boys and my cats, not even feral cats, they've caught a lot more than probably some of these numbers coming up over the years. I don't feel the commercial collectors are a problem here in the state. I want to go on the conservation part. These collectors, since I've been helping build guzzlers in this state, putting water for wildlife, habitat, I've done all this. I spent numerous hundreds of hours and thousands and thousands of dollars. These commercial collectors that I've seen here, and I didn't even know some of them were, have backpacked in miles just to build a guzzler that Endow helicopters have dropped for them to build. They care about these reptiles and what we have in our state. These are the guys putting their own dollars. There are eyes and ears out there that help us get some of these projects completed. And if there's a concern there, they help us get out there and tackle it. Because of them, I honestly feel is why I can go still, still see lizards and reptiles and snakes in the desert. And I do it all the time. I've never been on a walk in any desert or trail that I haven't seen some of these species that we're going after. Another concern that I have is we're already in this commission meeting, haven't even came up with any kind of, of solution that I've seen. Why are we not building a committee? And we're already talking about people breaking the law. I mean, that's like me asking everyone to give me their driver's licenses because I'm going to speed when I go home today. It's just not fair to punish people that haven't even committed a crime. If you want to go after and make our penalty stiffer for poachers, uh, even people that set traps in for a longer period of time. But again, my family, I, we support zero ban on this. We have a bigger issue with uh, hobbyists, uh, predators, feral cats, even house cats, because I know my cat was pretty proficient at catching lizards. But again, I think there's a lot we can do. And to base a decision off where we're at so far, I just, I think is premature. And we need to get with the collectors and with you guys and with our Department of Wildlife and come up with a good management system to, to help uh, even be better for our future. But again, I thank the commission for your time. Thank you, Mr. Werner. My name is Jim Vanis, <clears throat> and I've only been a resident of Las Vegas for five years, coming from Southwest Florida. Florida, I tagged loggerhead sea turtles for three years, trapped and moved nuisance alligators, was on the first recovery team for the Florida panther and the Florida crocodile, the American crocodile. So I feel like I'm not a novice when it comes to some of these issues. Currently, I radio track Gila monsters and record wildlife sightings for Endow as a volunteer. I spend at least 20 hours a week in the desert doing this labor of love and at least 160 miles a week on my dime. This is my passion. Reptiles have always been my passion. At last Tuesday's meeting, one of the board members said that commercial collectors are simply meeting the demand for reptiles that they catch. Just because there's a demand doesn't mean it's right. There's a demand for black rhino horns, for elephant ivory and shark fins. 
or you think that our little lizards fall in that same category, you may need to think again. Leopard lizards, desert iguanas, horned lizards, all three are main targets for commercial collectors. These three species do not breed well in captivity. The horned lizard does not even live well in captivity and mostly die a slow death and painful death of starvation. The supply of these species, species almost come exclusively from the state of Nevada because our neighboring states don't allow it. Throughout history, many fishermen, whalers, trappers have had to reinvent themselves, making a living doing something else when their target animal numbers crashed and burned. I feel pretty positive that our commercial collectors, who are obviously very intelligent and resourceful, can easily do the same. I'm just shy of 70 years old, and I had to reinvent myself when I came here. I worked 20 to 30 hours a week outside, year-round doing landscape maintenance, and capable of making close to the $30,000 that Mr. Bentz claims to gross. I'm no less passionate about reptiles than he is, but seeing these reptiles in the wild doing what they do naturally and not thinking about how much each one is worth on the pet trade. Please remember that reptiles are not only predators, but are also uh, prey animals for birds and mammals, and removing large numbers of them affects the environment adversely. Also remember that even though commercial collectors have provided valuable data over the years, citizen science is catching up fast. iNaturalist is just one site where anyone can report anything they see in nature, and over three million observations with GPS readings have been recorded. There are 256,000 citizen scientists registered and contributing to iNaturalist. Endow has a phone app that I use, along with our other volunteers, to record sightings of mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians that is sent directly to the arena office. So citizen science is really catching up on the data that we all need. Let's join our neighboring states. Thank you, sir. Your time is up. And and if you have a written comment, would you please submit it to Suzanne? Hello, my name is Scott Cambron. I'm the senior biologist for De uh, Clark County's Desert Conservation Program. And I'm gonna be finishing up, um, trying to start now, starting off where Kimberly left off. Um, another frequent comment that was heard at this week's advisory board meeting is that habitat loss plays a large role in population declines, a larger role in population declines than commercial collection activities. And this is likely true. However, habitat loss is largely a direct result of development. So this is habitat that will never be restored and will never be available for use of wildlife again. Commercial collection activities, however, can affect reptile populations in areas that are not subject to development pressures, specifically in areas that are meant to allow species to persist into the future. While the Wildlife Commission uh, does not have the power to affect the rate of development or to determine where it should occur, you do have the power to affect how commercial collection activities will impact populations in underdeveloped areas. The uh, Department of Wildlife and the Wildlife Commission have the responsibility to the citizens of this state to manage uh, reptile collection activities in a manner that prevents the need for future listing under the Endangered Species Act. The current proposal being advanced by the commercial collectors would not reduce the number of reptiles being collected in Nevada. They have proposed daily and annual bag limits that are, are so high that they would effectively be no change in the current practices. Uh, the proposal put forth by the Department of Wildlife, however, is scientifically sound and proposes modest reductions to the number of species or specimens currently being collected. Therefore, we do support the adoption of the proposal to um, either the, the ban or end out second proposal to reduce the numbers. Um, we think that there should be, they should convene a panel of experts to develop a scientifically based population monitoring protocol that can assess the relative abundance of reptiles across the landscape. Population monitoring should not be based on self-reported data from collectors who have a financial and personal conflict of interest. Uh, increase enforcement and monitoring activities um, some additional forms of monitoring could include conducting periodic ride-alongs and spot checks and commercial collections to ensure the accuracy of self-reported data. Uh, they should develop outreach and education materials to educate collectors on revised regulations, appropriate locations for collecting activities, and importance of sustainable collecting practices. And there should be, uh, they should take measures to ensure that the Department of Wildlife has adequate staffing and resources to monitor and enforce a commercial collection program. We suggest that this could be paid for in part due to raising fees for commercial collection relations. Thanks. Thank you, sir.
My name is Cheryl Hume. I've been a Clark County resident for more than 45 years. When we came here, we bought a property way out in the boonies. The town eventually grew up around us. We had a lot of lizards. We had road runners. We had quail nesting in the yard. When we left that property, there wasn't hardly anything left. Almost no lizards at all. I feel that it's wrong to allow the commercial collecting and selling of our reptiles. They won't regenerate. They won't recover if we keep on doing this. It has to be stopped, and it has to be stopped now. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Robert Vince, commercial reptile collector. I want to first thank you, Commission, for addressing this. I know it's time consuming and it's hard. Um, I also want to thank the past commission and the wildlife department for allowing me to do this for 31 years. I want you to know that. It has been a pleasure the whole time. It's not a job. It's something that I love to do. I'd like you not to shut it down. I would like you not to shut it down at least until part of the commission or all the commission can come out and see what we do. Not stories, not paper, not documents to come out and see what we do. And then after that, you guys can really base your decision on whether the reptiles are there, whether we're telling you the truth or not telling you, whether we have the ability to show you these reptiles that we're telling you are there. And that's all I'm asking you for to be able to do. I would also like to re-offer to the department for the biologist or even for the, the biologist, to, the people that they send out, the helpful people that send out, to go out with us so they can see what we do, to see if there's any possibility that we can help with the data that they're collecting before you shut us down. You can shut us down at any time. You've heard that from the start, so and it's not a big hurry to shut us down. If you did that, and you shut it, my hands are up. Like I said, I'm thanking you for allowing me to do it in the first place for the 31 years. It, it, and that's honest. The, uh, the, uh, and the offer for the, the biologist, that's non-commercial. That's me going out with them. I'm not going out in, in my commercial capacity to catch lizards and they ride along and, and help me catch commercial reptiles. That's me offering my time to go out there and show them how I catch them catch them if they want me to catch them, but everything stays out in the desert when they go out with me. It's not, they're with me and I'm taking stuff home, made money. It's it's same like everybody else volunteered. I appreciate the time. Thank you again for your time and the 31 years. Thank you, Mr. Benz. Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Deitch for the record, 18 year resident of Clark County. I really would like to implore the commission to make a complete com ban on commercial collection. Take a page from our neighboring states that have banned this practice. If Utah, California, and Arizona, and countless other states have banned these types of practices, there's probably a reason to believe that it's a flawed practice. We become a disproportionate collection site for the exploitation of the decimation of a native species. The self-report and self-regulation policy inevitably leads to the propensity for deceptive reporting and for self-promoting numbers. It's a dangerous policy that's wrought with difficulties. We're experiencing species extinction all over the globe, from elephants to frogs to fish, everything. I'm not sure why Clark County wants to be in the company of other geographies in wiping out species. By their own admission, if the nine commercial collectors that are um, collecting so few specimens, then what negative impact is it gonna have if that's banned? Be on the right side of history on this practice and ban it, it's irresponsible and inhumane. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian Patterson, Clark County resident, also uh, sit on the Clark County Wildlife Advisory Board. Um, first off, I'd like to Thank uh, the department, and Director Wasley, you should be very proud of your staff. They did a, a heck of a job with this presentation. They came to our CAB meeting on Tuesday night, and they listened, and they addressed 
99% of the, the points that were brought up that evening. Uh, they've done a great job. Uh, but with anything, I mean, you heard a ton of statistics, uh, statistics today, a lot of math, uh, a lot of things that you got to kind of sift through and filter through. And then is there anything with numbers? You can kind of make the numbers kind of flow your way or against you. Uh, a prime example, an, an easy one to point out, uh, when they mentioned that the states around Nevada have banned commercial uh, collection of reptiles. Uh, and that's true, but 81 or 82 percent of the states uh, do allow collection of reptiles. That's 41 states out of 50. They're really only focusing on uh, th the ones around us. So that's a typical example of, of, of math and, and making the math work in your favor. I mean, their own report um, kind of admits that they didn't take into account pitfall traps, they didn't take into account uh, auto traffic uh, on mortality, they didn't take into account weather or climate change, but most importantly, they didn't uh, take into account the hobbyist collection. I mean, the hobbyist collection is huge. Let's, let's play the math game that we've been playing. Um, it, it, for easy math, the state of Nevada has three million people. If you take 1% of that three, three million is 30,000 people. You with me, everybody following the, my easy math? 30,000 individuals, if they go out and collect one reptile apiece, that's double of what the, the commercial collection picks up every year. That's double. The, the hobbyist collection is mo easily double of what the, the um, commercial collection is, yet that's not on the table to even regulate, look at, or, or address. Um, there's a lot of things like that, that that need to come into play. It's, it's, it's a global picture that we want to look at. Everyone in the room is is passionate and thinks that the reptiles are are an important part of our state's culture and our state's uh, wildlife that should be managed. Um, I think they should be managed. I think uh, uh, setting season limits and quotas and things like that is a responsible management. I think putting a moratorium or shutting down the actual collection uh, is the wrong way to go. But it's up to you guys to make those decisions. I mean, you've heard a lot of people all day long, and you're going to hear a few more. Um, but that's that's the key issue. Um, real quick in closing, I got a couple of seconds. Um, global warming. We all hear the doom and gloom. Perhaps global warming is a is a positive for reptiles, as reptiles can expand their range. Just a thought. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Uh, good morning, uh, members of the commission. My name is Jennifer Taylor. I'm a resident of Clark County. I've also done, um, I've worked and done volunteer work with a number of uh, conservation environmental organizations. Um, I, you've heard from a ton of um, people that are well more versed than I am in um, reptile science and all of the sort of data that you've been discussing, but I just wanted to make sure that I came down as a citizen and said that I supported the committee's recommendation, sorry, the commission's rec uh, recommendation to adopt uh, a general ban on the commercial collection of, of reptiles. I moved here from Texas. Um, I lived in big cities where we didn't have vast outdoors, you know, environments to go and hike around. Um, and now I live up in the far northwest where we have a very cool little ecosystem because I live behind Floyd Lamb. But I have seen populations of what we saw, just like the other woman who spoke, um, our, our native populations and our own little ecosystem decline. And I know that part of that is development, but I also um, am certain that having uh, a collection system that allows withdrawal of those um, species regularly impacts not just where those species live, but a radiating circle of, of impacts from um, collection of species and from their, um, their loss to the greater ecosystem. Um, <clears throat> I, somebody else mentioned that it's a tradition to be able to do collection, it's a tradition to be able to hunt, it's a tradition to be able to do um, different types of, of wildlife management through sportsmen's work, but just because it's a tradition doesn't mean that it's an appropriate thing to continue. If it's a tradition that hurts the environment, that hurts our community, then it's something that should be revised and looked at, and I think that you're doing that now, and you've got the good data from scientists from your own wildlife commission um, and from folks that just work out in the field every day. Um, I also haven't really heard a lot of folks speak about the actual pitfall traps, and I know that that was one of the concerns. Um, I have, I'm actually a guardian of a desert tortoise, and I know that there's gotta be a lot of secondary impacts from those pitfall traps. 
my tortoise, if he flips over, he's got to be able to crawl out of whatever he's flipped into, and he's got to be able to actually flip himself back over. And these types of systems for collection are, are just true death traps, and there doesn't seem to have been a lot of data on the secondary impacts. Um, you've heard a lot of folks say that our ecosystem is fragile. I just want to emphasize that. When you, take out one, when you take out one species or deplete one species, it has a greater impact. The gentleman who spoke about mule deer um, decline, all of, all of these things are interconnected, and I know you know that. That's why you sit on this, this board. Um, but I just want to echo again the comments from all of the scientists about um, species loss, economic impacts, and really urge you to um, endorse and adopt the general ban. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Stephanie Myers, Las Vegas. To ban or to regulate? As a commission, you've worked hard to create and to craft your very own agency, the Nevada Department of Wildlife, and it appears to be functioning well. Those of us who've had the pleasure of hearing previous and today's presentations by biologist Jason Jones, and also from hearing from biologist Jennifer Newmark and Joe Barnes, we've heard their message loud and clear. Evidence shows that commercial reptile collectors are taking more wildlife than is sustainable. Why would you have built an exceptional agency full of well-qualified biologists whose job it is to inform you and then ignore their advice. A simple ban versus pages and pages of regulation? Well, please join all surrounding states by simply prohibiting permanently the commercial collection of reptiles in Nevada. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Myers. Chairman Wallace and members of the commission, my name is John Zablocki for the record. I'm the Mojave Desert Program Director for the Nature Conservancy. Nature Conservancy is uh, Nevada's, by the numbers, largest conservation organization, and we very much occupy what, what we call the radical middle. Our membership, thousands of members, our board of trustees is nonpartisan. We have Republicans, Democrats. We have community business leaders, hunters, anglers, folks from across just about every walk of life. Um, we submitted to the commission on um, a couple days ago our official statement on this issue. Um, if it's not on the record, we can, we can resubmit it. Our position is for the, um, we strongly urge the commission to support NDOW's proposed regulation for a general prohibition on commercial collection of reptiles in this state for the reasons that the departments describe so well. The cost associated with trying to implement alternative regulations, the evidence of declines to our native species, um, the enforceability, and the consistency with other states. And I encourage the commission to evaluate the factuality, the, the previous statement regarding collection laws and across the United States. We've submitted along with our recommendations um, a, a detailed report on that issue. Um, in conclusion, I, I want to ask the Commission a few questions, and it echoes comments that have been made by others here today. On whose behalf are you making this decision? Are you making the decision on behalf of Nevadans, Nevadans wildlife, or for the sympathies of a handful of folks, of which I myself am sympathetic to? I grew up hunting and fishing. My dad used to take me on reptile reconnaissance missions. I had, I had pet reptiles as a child. Um, and a couple other things I wanted to, to mention as far as our recommendations. Out of consideration for the commercial collections, while we do strongly support the general prohibition on the commercial collection of reptiles, we do urge the commission to consider some form of a grace period, not to exceed any longer than one year um, before the, the regulation would take effect to allow for some, some measure of adjustment or transition for those, the current permit holders. <coughs> Lastly, we urge the commission to address the issue of hobby collection. We ourselves do not recommend any sort of uh, change to the status quo at the moment on that. However, we do think that studying the issue um, has merit 
and some sort of uh, reptile stamp or you know, some sort of um, recommendation that could be developed by the Department of Wildlife would be, uh, would be wise to do. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, my name is Todd Eskew. I'm here as a Clark County resident as well as a research scientist. And um, I've lived here for some 40 years, almost, no, I've worked here for almost 40 years. And uh, I spend on my free time, almost all my time photographing and studying uh, the wildlife in Southern Nevada and the Western US. And uh, I'm concerned that um, I want to live in a place where we're managing our uh, wildlife resources sustainably and in good stewardship. And uh, I'd like to see us do that. And uh, along those lines, um, my particular point today is that uh, the data were put into question in different ways that were shown today and then the analyses were put into question. And um, uh, the fact is that uh, the, s the science is a process. And uh, the analyses that have been done so far got us 90% of the way to finishing that process of determining whether or not it's good science. And so I would just say there's one more step. I would highly encourage um, the state of uh, Nevada, the staff, to publish this uh, work that they've done. Uh, I myself have scores of publications to my name in scientific articles, and I'm the editor of a scientific journal, and uh, if it came across my desk as something to consider of whether or not it should be reviewed by other scientists that are perfectly competent to uh, analyze these data and understand whether or not it is science, uh, I'm perfectly certain that they would find that case. And then, uh, actually, other countries that are selling their wildlife in our pet shops here would be able to benefit from knowing what our experience has been and see how we're handling this situation. I think that would be an excellent way. Now, to the data themselves, uh, clearly they aren't the actual numbers of the animals because we don't have that, but they're an index of the pressure on the animals, a very clear index, and that's the best we have. And it's remarkable from an analysis that was done to see eight species come up that way. Never in my career have I seen declines shown as an index of the populations uh, to be um, that strong. Uh, the only thing similar to that that I've seen are um, a graph that look just the same, but the axis at the bottom was the number of desert tortoises in the last 40 years. And they have also declined that way. And as we all know, they have been uh, listed under the Endangered Species Act, which is um, something that I, there may only be one person in this room that would like to see that happen, the, uh, the individual that said that that's what their job is. So they might get some marks for that. But everybody else here does not want to see any of our species additional to the desert tortoise listed as an endangered species because the county the other day, the st county staff made a very good argument, economic argument, as to why that would be a bad idea. So we have it within our, um, our realm of possibilities to uh, turn this around and manage these organisms properly, and I uh, would hope that um, the decision is made to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jeremy Bentz. Um, commercial reptile collector and lifelong Nevada resident. Um, I just want to point out, I hear a lot of talk about other states and being a lifelong resident, and you guys seen we travel all over the state, it's not another state. Nevada stands alone. We have more public land other than other states do. We have farming, ranching, it, it, mining. It's not a complete, it, it's not California. It's not all houses and develop. There's a lot of open land out there that isn't being touched by people. As a commercial reptile collector, I can't touch all that land. Let's be honest. And I understand that we talk about chuckawallas. Chuckawallas seem like one of the smaller numbers, but I can only catch chuckawallas in one canyon out of a whole mountain range. In Pahrump, maybe five canyons is what we're catching them out of, but that whole mountain range, if you were to hike around it, you'll still see chuckawallas in there. We just can't touch all that land, and I hope you guys consider that in your decision. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My, <clears throat> my name is Tom Bentz. The lizard population in Nevada is truly enormous. I've been collecting reptiles and observing them for just about 70 years. I caught my first horned toad in Mina in 1948. I spent the, 50, the 50s in central Nevada collecting lizards. I have two rubber boas that are in the preserve collection at the University of Nevada at Reno. In the 60s, I was accompanied in Central Nevada catching lizards by my two pre-elementary school sons. By the 70s, I'd moved to Southern Nevada. 
I have the largest reptile collection in the state of Nevada, and I still continue to catch lizards in central Nevada and southern Nevada with my two sons. My reptile collection was on display for the public in Henderson, Nevada. By the, by the 80s, my sons and I helped initiate this program of commercial reptile collecting. I have observed in the wild regal ringnecks, blind worm snakes, and gila monsters. On two different separate occasions, I've seen hundreds of tortoises above ground actively moving around. My sons and I have tremendous knowledge about Nevada reptiles. You would go a long ways. It would probably be, I would say, impossible for you to find anybody with equal knowledge of my two sons on Nevada lizards. We've always been willing to share this information with anybody that wanted it, and we still are. It would be my hope that you would continue this program, that you would be considering the possibility of looking at the reptile population yourself. We would be glad to take you and show you what this population is before you set the hard quotas for the program to continue. We've never asked for unlimited quantity. Once it was given to us, we took advantage of it, but we've always con considered quotas an important part of this program. I'd like to thank you very much for the consideration that you've given us. We couldn't get it in any other state, and I'd like to thank the state for allowing us to have this program for 31 years. Thank you very much for your time and your patience. Thank you, Mr. Benz. Jim Orndorff, uh, I've been a uh, resident of Clark County for over 50 years. I, uh, I never knew this commission subsidizes any one special group on commercializing wildlife. And I'm really, really disappointed that we'd even do that. But uh, besides that, I own 250 acres in the South Spring Mountains. I'm out there every week. It's been eight to 10 years since I've seen a Chuck Lawler. I'm out there walking my property all the time. I see numerous other animals and things. I have two water developments that I've developed for wildlife. And I've, during this last June, I've received uh, between 1,000 and 1,050 pictures and videos of wildlife using my drinkers. My drinkers were available when the Department of Wildlife drinkers went down from freezing. I do not approve of unlimited collection of or the commercial, commercialization of wildlife in Nevada. What's next? Fish, big game, small game? We can't have this. Wildlife's for everybody to enjoy. It's not there to commercialize. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, my name's Thomas L. Bentz. The L's important. Uh, I had a prepared statement I was gonna read to you guys after being prodded into talking today. I've talked to all of you. I think I've covered pretty much. I have everything to say, but my daughter called me from Idaho last night. And she said that uh, in the 45 years I've been doing this, how many people have I run into in the field that do anything like it? And the number zero. So for all the comments that have been made about how much other research is being done and how much other stuff, you've seen how much I do, you see where it is, you guys have seen the data for that. Not one other individual has ever crossed my path while I was doing that. I've gone out on the road between where I come to and from and run into four different park rangers or wardens. And that's the extent of that. I taught each one of them how to do an inspection on the reptiles because they'd never done one when they did it. Took an hour and a half for each one of them, walked them through the entire process. I am asking you to consider the compromise, not any set of numbers, compromise, and the idea that we can move forward with some type of permit and regulations to control it and rules to go by. The idea of using a hobbyist permit system where two animals can be taken out at a time until we achieve 24 of them in a year, much like the chief warden said, there's no way to carry on with an annual limit. Every time I take them out of the state, I get to start all over again. That's how the black market works from California. It did when in the 70s when they first started doing it. That's how black market works. I did breed reptiles for 25 years. I do know an awful lot if you want to know how people move stuff around. I'm very familiar with the exact methods they do it, how we control that through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. 
when they go to export. We don't control it at all between hobbyist to hobbyist, only in the commercial sales. Hobbyist to hobbyist, there's no watching. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Benz. Mr. Chair, uh, my name is Jeff Dixon. I'm the state director for Nevada with the Humane Society of the United States. And on behalf of the HSUS and the Humane Society International, we thank the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners for uh, taking up this important issue. Uh, the collection of Nevada's reptiles feeds into the global and often uh, unregulated, unsustainable, and inhumane reptile trade. Uh, we therefore urge the commission to prohibit all collection of reptiles for, commission, for commercial purposes. Uh, we support the conservationist values reflected in NAC uh, 503, Section 95, and see no other feasible way uh, to uphold these values and to fully prohibit the capture and removal of these members of our desert ecosystems. Um, when we say feasible, when the chief game warden says that these seasonal quotas are unenforceable, that gets to feasibility. Um, when you look at the permit fees of $250 for nine people, um, and then the cost to cover such a program, um, that is not feasible and it's not fair to the taxpayers to have to then subsidize it, uh, the oversight of this program to make sure that we're actually collecting uh, and that we're actually enforcing this program. Um, the overcollection for commercial trade has resulted in the decline uh, or destruction of several reptile species. I think we have seen that locally. That's why we have an Endangered Species Act. Um, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, for example, in other places, the U.S. box, bog, spotted, and wood turtles have all been detrimentally affected by overcollection for the pet trade. Uh, species for with small ranges, those with restricted or small areas, um, and those that depend on high survivability rates uh, or high adult survivorship, and each of these applies to uh, reptiles in Nevada, um, can be detrimentally affected uh, by even a small number of individuals being removed from their habitat. Uh, because we are confident that a independent study, not the, the self-collected data, uh, would uh, would show a species decline and a broader spoiling of the habitat. The only way to comply with these con conservationist principles outlined in that rule is to fully prohibit their collection for commercial purposes. So again, we thank the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners for taking up this matter and uh, we urge you to uh, implement that ban. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Dr. Moldy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Don Moldy, Reno. Um, my compliments to the department, to Jennifer, Jason, uh, this is by far the best presentation I've ever seen in 40 years of attending these meetings. The mule deer stuff notwithstanding, this is terrific. You've got great information to consider. Uh, a word on enforcement. Uh, there are two ways to look at enforcement. This country runs on the concept of voluntary compliance with the law. I don't have a cop at my elbow every moment of the day, neither do you. So if you do pass regulations that impose limits and so on, I think it's reasonable to expect that those who are subjected to those will voluntarily comply. On the other hand, if you think that this uh, process uh, would be unenforceable, then it seems to me you cannot allow the activity to occur. It has to be one or the other. I hope that um, those of you who were on the commission uh, reviewed the uh, Supreme Court decision uh, of 1990, which basically has come full circle again. As you recall, the commission um, passed this regulation in 1989. They got sued by the Bentz uh, family and others. Uh, the district court went against the department. The Supreme Court went in your favor. And despite that, the collectors have had a nice run for the last 30 years uh, at the department's, uh, with the department's blessing. I think the Ben's comments uh, uh, recognizing that are well taken. They have, had a, they have had a nice run. But now it looks like times are changing, and the Supreme Court decision contains some forward-looking uh, information that's still pertinent today. I'll refer to one uh, item in a moment. By the way, the, this Supreme Court, I think Chief uh, Justice then was Cliff Young, <coughs> who's one of Nevada's foremost conservationists for two terms, he was president of the Nevada Wild, or the National Wildlife Federation, served in Congress, was a great man. I suspect he wrote this, just how, uh, from how it's written. The one comment I would um, 
radio has to do with whether uh, it's uh, making a living on the back of wildlife, the commercial, the economic aspect. The Supreme Court, he says, we hold that the court erred in giving too much weight to the commercial uses of wildlife and not enough weight to the recreational and aesthetic uses of wildlife. We also conclude that the court erred in failing to consider that there are economic benefits to preserving, protecting, and managing wildlife for aesthetic, recreational, and scientific reasons. That's from the 1990 Supreme Court decision. So have a look at it if you haven't seen it. It's a great document. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Moldy. For the record, Fred Volz. If 15,000 people were removed from specific Las Vegas neighborhoods each and every year, the impact on the continued viability of those neighborhoods would be significant. Why is it any different from the mass extraction of the public's reptiles for resale? Doesn't the mass reselling of wildlife blatantly violate the North American model that is frequently cited as the Bible for hunters to follow in their activities? During the last commission meeting on this subject, great concern about the impact on one commercial reptile extraction family was expressed. That concern might be appropriate if the commission was the Chamber of Commerce, but the commission's core responsibility is to manage and protect wildlife, not ensure its extinction. Economic obsolescence has occurred with horse wagon makers and Betamax videotape makers. Wise public policy making does not accommodate the pecuniary needs of one family to the exclusion of 2.9 million other Nevadans. For the public treasury to receive pennies per extracted reptile when the extractors are selling them for, for many multiples in the commercial market fails to deliver sufficient compensating value for their loss, yet there's been no discussion so far of applying a commensurate severance tax when commercial reptile extractors remove thousands of reptiles from public lands for sale. The other option on the table today is to somehow regulate commercial reptile extraction and resale. How would Endow, with its meager staff of game wardens, possibly enforce any new commercial regulations? Nevada needs to bring its practices in line with the surrounding states and ban the commercial extraction of reptiles rather than being a sinkhole for reptile destruction. And to the people who are concerned with uh, the unfairness of this, uh, I would just say, uh, let's look at the wildlife first and not worry about the people issue. That's the objective of this body. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. My name is Joshua Cowart. I'm a longtime resident of uh, Henderson, Nevada. Um, I just want to remind everybody uh, that um, not everyone is a dog and cat uh, person. Some of us like reptiles, some of us like birds. Um, these reptiles and birds that we have um, don't just appear out of nowhere. Um, they don't just appear in the pet shops. They come from somewhere. Uh, whether <coughs> I keep ball pythons, I keep a Colombian uh, milk snake, I keep a black racer. My ball pythons are captive bred from Africa. Uh, my um, milk snake is captive bred from uh, uh, Costa Rica. My black rat is a wild caught black rat snake from probably around Tennessee uh, area. One of my more favorite animals, my 13 year old son, which is a junior herp uh, uh grew up with these animals. These are part of his life. Um, so I just want to remind you, we don't keep any native animals to Nevada, but our animals do come from other places and they are coming from other collectors, uh, commercial collectors in other states or other countries. So if you're going to restrict this here, what you're doing is restricting other people from owning uh, these, these amazing animals and have them as pets um, and enriching their lives, just like your dogs and your cats enrich your lives. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up um, that I was glad to hear is talking about um, the feral cat situation, or now we like to call community cats in Nevada because it's more PC, I guess. It, it doesn't sound as bad. Um, I know in... Uh, you, uh, some of your members were here during the county commissioner's uh, meetings on changing the laws and changing the wording on the Clark County's laws to these cats. These cats are killing our native wildlife. If we really uh, have an issue with the population of our animals, why don't we look at the real problems and not look at uh, 10 people that are out there collecting uh, uh, some commercial uh, animals. Let's look at the uh, 200,000 cat, feral cats that roam our valley, kill our wildlife, kill and destroy uh, 
put disease into the environment. Um, so I, I would just like to encourage you guys, I'm all about uh, responsible collecting. Um, I don't personally collect, like I said, but I am uh, in favor of personal of uh, responsible collecting, and I'm against uh, an all-out ban. We've seen what bans do on uh, other levels at animals that are not under the Endangered Species Act. Um, when you come, at, come out and ban something that is not in a, a problem, you end up into a, pr a different problem of overpopulations uh, and those type of situations. Thank you. Thank you. John Hyatt from Las Vegas, also a member of the Clark County Cab. The history of commercial and unregulated exploitation of wildlife over the past several hundred years is not a pretty one. It's one of ex extirpation and extinction. I think everything from whales um, right on. It's, it's, it's not a pretty picture. And so therefore, we really need to come out with a system to regulate this. The present system is not sustainable over time. Biologically, we can't support regulation here. We really, from a biological standpoint, it should be banned. We're rel well aware that the web of life means that all of these creatures are either eaten, eating or being eaten. And when we take reptiles out of the system, that means that there's a um, further follow-up impact on the animals, birds that prey on those. So. It's a, it's a ripple effect. We don't really know how big that effect is. So biologically, the system or the decision is a fairly simple one. Politically, it's something else. And that's really your job is to figure out how we can, um, in, a, in an effective and fair manner, phase out the collect commercial collection of reptiles. And I would be happy to phase out the hobbyist collection of reptiles at the same time not quite sure how to go about doing that. Uh, we've heard testimony today about the difficulties of that. I would also remind the commission that while the NAC and N NRS are fairly specific about what the responsibilities are, there's another s point of law that needs to be considered, and that's a public trust doctrine, which actually allows a bigger look, a bigger picture of how we deal with problems, societal problems, and in this case, particularly wildlife problems. So I would urge you to consider the public trust doctrine when it actually comes to how we're going to do this, how we're going to phase it out, and what the ultimate responsibilities are for managing Nevada's uh, non-game wildlife. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hyatt. Further public comment? I'm going to ask you guys to come on up. So if somebody's not here at the next time, we're going to call it back. Stacia Newman, president of Nevada Political Action for Animals. We're in favor of the ban, and we, um, we really are in favor of having the commercial collectors um, completely banned. And um, I, I wanted to expand just a little bit on the feral cat situation is most of the feral cats are contained in large cities because of the food source. As many times as I visit the desert, I find very few feral cats out there. They rely on the city. Um, and I don't, um, I feel that the collectors should not be allowed just to pillage our desert reptiles and snakes. It's shameful that close to a half a million reptiles and snakes have been removed from our land since the early, since the late 1980s. And many of these animals die in the transportation to other states and countries. Thousands more will die of improper care. And I've been involved with um, animal welfare issues for many, many years. And through the years, we have received calls here. I've been here since 1998. And some of the uh, reptiles that are taken out of the desert wild are filtered out through the swap meets. And we also have received phone calls from other states of people who have received reptiles on the receiving end, and they are upset because some of them do not make it. They arrive dead or dying, and they try to save them huge vet bills. So we've taken some of these calls, so I want to express my concern for that. Um, this is really uh, a very uh, serious problem when it comes to um, making anything else but a ban, but a proposal, because 
you can add as many restrictions, requirements, regulations, quotas, but it does not change the fact that this law is absolutely unenforceable. There's no way to effective, effectively monitor this practice because it takes place in remote areas of the desert. Um, to allow this activity to continue is a reckless disregard for the protection and preservation of our desert reptiles and snakes. The only responsible decision is to prohibit the practice permanently. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Newman. Hello, thank you. My name is David Chrysler. I'm uh, here as a citizen. I was born and raised in Southern Nevada. I am a member of the Taurus group, but I'm not here representing them. Um, I wanted to point out uh, a couple of points. Um, I understand that when a large commercial development, such as a solar farm or so, or so forth, puts in a permit or pays for a permit, they don't have to clear off the, this area. They can pay uh, a fee so that they do not have to remove the indigenous species from that area and just clear it. Um, currently, they cannot do that in the case of many of these animals that are being collected commercially because there is a commercial interest in these animals. They just can't wipe off a section. If this is banned and there is no commercial uh, enterprise involved in these animals, does this mean now that when a company comes in and wipes out all these animals, they don't have to look for these anymore, that they can just wipe out this area? What we've seen is a huge degradation of the areas that these animals can live in. When, as we build out our, our valley, which has been one of the largest, fastest growing areas for decades, we're all aware of that, we destroy this habitat. As that happens, there's going to be fewer of these animals, certainly in this area. We don't know what that's doing to the populations out in the hills and out in the open areas because we're not out there. The only people that have got any records happen to be the commercial people that are out there doing it now. If we get rid of them, we have no data. We need to keep some data. I am in, tr in favor of regulations. This has to be watched. I think the collectors could be used to get more data. The data they've got is not perfect. It doesn't include a lot of animals that they do see, a lot of things that they come across that could be recorded. We could be using them as a resource to get a lot more information about what's going on in our deserts. And I think that's the way this ought to be handled. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I'm Jim Tracy. I'm a Clark County resident. Uh, I used to be a past commercial collector myself. And basically what I'm here to say is that I think that some of the things that we're, we're doing here is positive, but I also think that there's many things that still need to be looked into. Um, as far as going out and looking for these animals, uh, I, I don't see any of them as threatened or endangered right now. I'm not saying that, like some people say, that maybe down the line that could be so, but again, that's all speculation. Uh, I can go to many different places and still find all the animals in question <coughs> without any problems, and I've been here and I've been a collector and I've been in the reptile business for 53 years, and all I can tell you is that, you know, it seems to be like most people are kind of looking at this as a foothold for something else, and the reality is I, I don't think the problem is quite to the degree that we think. Again, it's just a handful of people, but if you've ever gone out yourself and walked the mountains, it's a little bit different story. Now, I'm not saying that you can go out every single day and all these animals are gonna be sit there looking at you. That, that's not true. As a collector, you go out, some days you might not see anything, and you can go back two days later and the place is loaded. So it has a lot to do with, let's just say, the, uh, the environment itself and what is going on with weather. But beyond that, I, I, I really don't see a big drop in the reptiles. So when you look at the numbers, the numbers are just based on, well, for starters, over a 30-year period, which is a pretty long time. But if we are actually doing this because we want to protect these animals and keep them from being endangered, I think there first would be more signs of things happening like that. You can go to many areas right now that are protected from collecting, and the animals abound. So it's not like they're not there. So they're truly not endangered, and they're truly not threatened as a species. 
And all I'm saying is that I think we need more work. We need more documentation. Um, I think that Endow should be working with the collectors because they do a valuable resource in actually going out there and seeing what is available and what is not. And I know I've done my fair share to help not only in this state, but in the state of Arizona as well, where we were private collectors for the Fish and Game Office. So the thing is that there are many cases here where people have said things that are true, but again, there's not enough proof in the, in the numbers as far as the whole goes. And just like some people have pointed out, there are many, 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 many miles of open land that I can tell you as a collector, you never get to. So again, I don't know how many uh, local collectors have collected in people's backyards and caught the two fence lizards that were on their back fence post, but I can tell you it's been none of the commercial collectors. So again, I just wanted to say for the record, I'm, I'm against the all out ban. Uh, I think we just need to do more work with working with the people that are available in the hobby as it stands. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. And seeing no further public comment at the podium, I'll bring it back to the commission for further discussion. Commissioner Valentine. <clears throat> I'll start this off, being the oldest guy sitting up here. <clears throat> Being a native Nevadan, I, I tend to lean towards regulation at this particular point in time, <clears throat> but I'm also concerned about the, the enforcement. And <clears throat> I'm just wondering if, 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 it's, if there's a legal, if there might be a problem legally, if, if we were to freeze any future license for commercial collecting, so Brian Stockton, Senior Deputy Attorney General, for the record, um, the, um, the statute, which I don't have pulled up right now, is, as Ms. Newmark mentioned, is um, the, for commercial collection, the, the burdens on the, the applicant to prove that, the, that uh, the commercial collection won't be detrimental to the, to the species and things. So in, in, in my opinion, she was correct when she mentioned that, that not issuing the licenses because the or the permits because the data doesn't support um, the issuance of those would be well within the department's authority. I think the only reason they don't do that now is the prior decision of, of this commission to allow the unlimited uh, collection. So I, I, I'm hoping that was a clear enough answer that that uh, the department is not required to issue these permits in any one year except because of the precedents from this commission. So does that make sense? Yeah, I was just mainly trying to clarify if, if, if we did go forward with some sort of uh, regulation as far as uh, seasons and quotas, <clears throat> whether or not we could limit the number of commercial collectors um, to the current collectors that are out there. That, that's going to be a, a, a factual thing uh, or a factual finding that has to be made. Um, I know when they were harvesting the blackfish on Lahontan, there was a second commercial company that wanted to do that. And, and the finding was that there weren't enough blackfish to support two commercial collectors. And so that would be a valid reason to do, but it'd have to be done on a, on a factual basis, perhaps uh, a factual finding that, that uh, the current nine collectors um, I mean, and you do have the data before you today, I think, to say that the current nine collectors are having some impact on the population and adding any more commercial collectors would be detrimental. So, so yes, as long as you make the factual finding <coughs> that it's appropriate to limit the collectors to the ones who are currently licensed or permitted. I'm, s I'm still hoping I'm making sense because I'm... <coughs> so basically that's, that's what I'm thinking, that, that we would institute a regulation where we look at quotas and seasons and and that there would be no more than the current number of commercial collectors um, uh, doing that that commercial collecting <coughs> commissioner McNinch. thank you mr chairman um I, i've got a lot in my head here um but i i uh that prompts something that i had made a couple of notes on and um, I guess where I would, um, 
where I would lean on that one particular issue is, is that if we're de denying uh, a permit application based on our scientifically based concerns with, uh, with our wildlife population, then we're basically saying that we've got a problem and to allow it to continue is problematic as well. And that, that's where my concern would be, is that if, um, I remember the blackfish thing, it was a mess. And um, uh, we're gonna be in a position to where we're telling uh, this person over here, yeah, you can, you can make a living collecting wildlife. And then these people, over this person over here are saying, no, you can't. And it's because uh, what these guys, what the, what's going on over here um, is creating scientific concerns for us, is creating problems for us biologically. And that, that's, that's, that's not a very, um, very good place to be. It's, it's, a, it's a weak position, I think. And, um, I, and th this whole thing is built on that premise in my mind. Um, I look at it as <laughs> um, we get behind our agency or we don't. And it's gonna be one of those things. Um, that's just how I'm falling out on this thing. I've got a lot more to say, but I'll leave it at that for now. Vice Chairman Johnston. First, I want to thank everyone who gave public comment today. I also uh, want to thank all the people who sent in correspondence. Prior to this meeting, I really struggled as to where we're at, where, where this commission might go, and where I was. And I was um, moving back and forth. And now, sitting here today, um, I, I'm I'm solidly convinced on where I'm at. Um, I want to make a few comments. I, I absolutely reject the assertion that Ms. Newmark and Mr. Jones put their professional reputations on the line and came in here and somehow tried to mislead us and tell us there was a problem if the science didn't support it. I, I just reject that assertion. People may disagree. People may have different interpretation, but we have an interpretation from biologists who are talking about an issue. Um, but I want to go back to how we got here today. And I've heard people say we've been wasting our time on this issue, and I reject that. We're here today because the game wardens and members of the department took us out along a dirt road north of Las Vegas, and we saw the waste, not only of reptiles, but mammals, through series of pitfall traps. And we said, we've got an issue. And that's why we're here. And I don't think we've wasted our time in any manner whatsoever to take up this issue, no matter what the outcome may be. So when I hear from the department and the numbers, when I think about that visit and the field trip we had, the status quo to me is absolutely unacceptable. We have to have something. And so then the question is, do we regulate by season and quota, have limits? I think what I heard today was that the Department of Wildlife was not convinced that that would solve the issue, that it might help, but it would not be a solution. Um, and I agree with something that Dr. Moldy said was, yeah, we, we, we rely on voluntary compliance. So if we put in seasons and limits, am I confident that that would solve the problem? And I'm not. I'm not in this instance because of what I saw in the field. I'm hearing how, and, and I've seen the evidence that shows that the commercial collection was occurring in the same location as the pitfall traps. And I find it hard to believe, and I do not believe, the argument that those were put in the ground to collect scorpions. Because if they're passionate about the reptiles, and that's their livelihood and the commercial collection, those traps would not have been put in the ground to the detriment of those reptiles, simply so they could collect in scorpions. So to me, I've, I've really gotten convinced during the course of the meeting that the only appropriate solution at this point in time is to ban commercial collection of reptiles under the specific facts that we have before us today, the information from the department, what we've seen with our own eyes. And uh, that's what I'm going to support. And I believe I, I think the way to do that would whatever permit exists now 
would be valid until it expires. That way we're not revoking licenses and creating a legal issue in that regard. But going forward, I don't believe the department should be uh, issuing uh, permits for cl commercial collection of reptiles. And I also go back to the Nevada Administrative Code that's on the books right now. The department issues those permits. If it's proven to the department, it will not have a detrimental effect on wildlife. And what I'm hearing is we're having a detrimental effect on wildlife. And for that reason, um, only one position I'm going to support on this issue, uh, unless I'm convinced otherwise. I'll keep my mind open, but um, it's a small crack in the door right now for me uh, in terms of where I'm at. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Commissioner Omberg. Well, I'll tell you, Brad took uh, the words out of my mouth. Uh, I'm in complete alignment with him and in complete alignment with the Department of Wildlife. I think everything they presented was uh, was not disingenuous at all. It, it's just, it is the facts that is, this is what's occurring. And uh, I, I think we have to completely support them. And through regulation, it leaves too many doors open. And, and according to the own uh, commercial collectors, it, it you might as well have, um, uh, close the door on them because uh, that, that ain't going to do it and it leaves too many legal issues uh, as far as enforcement for me. So I, I'm with Brad com completely on this. Thank you, Commissioner Holmberg. Commissioner Barnes. I guess uh, we started this whole process. Um, I was I was like Paul, I was, I was in favor of uh, some kind of regulation. But as we got into it and the more thought I put into it, I kept thinking, well, what's this regulation gonna, gonna look like? And uh, I was kind of thought, well, maybe through some of the discussion today, I'd get a better picture of what, what this regulation was gonna look like, and, and I didn't get that. And then I heard the, the concerns about the enforcement, and, uh, and uh, that's problematic for me also. So I think um, probably through, all, through the discussion, kind of where I'm leaning now, it, it's probably the is probably the ban. I see the, you know, you see the numbers and they're declining. And uh, so you wonder at what, where's the threshold that this pop population can withstand because I think there's, I've seen research on uh, other species where, where they were hunted or fished below a, uh, a threshold level that um, they're not coming back. So I, th I think that, that there is an issue and, uh, and it does need to be addressed but uh, I think that uh, where I am right now is, is, pr is probably the ban. That, right now, that, in my mind, that's the only thing that, uh, that I can make sense of. Commissioner Hubs. Thank you. Um, well, obviously, from a public perspective, when I, when I heard the question, um, you know, who are you here today for? I, I think about that every time I come to my commission meeting. First and foremost, we're here as trustees, and I always try to remember that we are trustees of our wildlife, and we've he heard a fairly grim story about our reptiles for quite some time now. Um, I'm also here, obviously, to listen to the public, and uh, the resoundingly, the public is not for um, unlimited commercial collection. They want at least some form of regulation, or if not, an outright ban. Um, for me, the data, there's a lot of talk about the data and what that really means, but uh, the other gentleman, I think his name was Todd Espy, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I liked how he explained what we're seeing with the data, um, but it's an index, and it's a, a good index of pressure on these populations, and it's real, and it's speaking to all of us today. Um, lastly, I couldn't be more happier to hear uh, my fellow commissioners um, as concerned as I am about these uh, populations. So um, I'm from the get-go, I've been will willing to go to a total ban. That's never been a question in my mind. So um, just from an enforcement perspective and for cost effectiveness, for all of those reasons, I think that's uh, the way to move forward. Thank you. Commissioner McNinch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Johnson's recognition. We've had we've had a lot of meetings. Um, there's there's a, uh, an awful lot of new faces in here, and I can tell you that we've had um, we've had uh, um, issues that are just as uh, uh, emotional and just as uh, significant um, to, to other people in different ways, um, where we didn't have. Um, uh, 
things were way more tense with the public comment period, so um, I have to reiterate that too. It's been a lot worse in here, and I appreciate everybody uh, being very respectful of each other and and uh, and providing their input in a civil manner. I think it's uh, it's good, and um, uh, I I guess I had made a ton of notes um, in my mind uh, the things that had tripped me, and uh, you know I guess uh, you know a lot of them have already been stated, so all I would have been doing is summarizing some of those thoughts, but. Um, the one thing that is is real important to me is is um, uh, I do want to mention the North American model wildlife management and um, this particular issue uh, crosses many of those tenants and um, uh, I think it's very responsive of us um, to to address this. I think that uh, you know with all due respect to the reptile collectors and uh, um, I, I do believe that uh, that a ban is is the only way to go. And um, uh, I think that uh, by doing so, we're reinforcing our, um, our support and our intent and, and sending a message that it is that the wildlife, uh, the North American model for wildlife uh, management is, uh, is, a, uh, is important to us and, uh, and our actions are speaking louder than just words when, when we do that. So um, I appreciate the, the direction that the, um, that the commission is thinking and, and um, that's, those are my thoughts for Do you have anything, Paul, or I'll go ahead and go either way you want to do it. Just one more thing. You know, when I was talking about regulation and and quotas, I also was thinking about a, a time period, a two years or something like that, that we would we look at, at the numbers. But obviously I'm hearing um, I'm hearing something that this commission wants to go one direction, so um, and I don't disagree with that direction. I was just hoping that we could come up with some sort of a, a compromise situation here. Thank you, Paul. And I too want to kind of reiterate some of the things. I agree a lot with what uh, Vice Chairman Johnston had to say, and I, I and also Commissioner McNich. The the public comment went great today, and I really appreciate that. It makes the meeting run smoother when everyone can be constructive not tear each other down and get your point across. And I, I wanna thank everyone for that. I appreciate that today. And then also, I, I, it really hasn't been um, said specifically, but the pitfall trap, I mean, Commissioner Johnson brought up the pitfall traps to me is a big thing. And I think anything that moves forward for me needs to have an absolute ban on those 100%, no, no exceptions on that. And, um, and then another thing that kind of spoke to me to today as well is we're looking at the commercial operation, but I think, I know today we're not looking at the hobbyists, but I think that could have a pretty big impact as well. I mean, if we're gonna, if we're gonna look at it from the commercial aspect, I also feel like we need to look at it from the hobbyist aspect. And I realize that's not a today issue, but I wanna put that in the commissioner's minds of that, because that, that's important to me too, that we've, we can't look at one without the other because the example was brought up if you had 30,000 people, I believe the number was, and they each took two, the numbers were huge compared to even what the commercial people are taking. So I, I think that's important. And we really, I don't think we have any specific numbers of what the hobbyists may be, or at least I don't, I didn't catch those today in the discussion. So that to me is an important thing we need to look at in the future as well. Um, when um, Chief Turnip C came up and gave about the, the limits of the practicality of enforcement, that speaks to me as well that, because I came here thinking, well, maybe I, with Commissioner Valentine, I, I, hopefully we can find a compromise, but if that's an issue as well, between that and what the department's brought forth today, I, I think it, it pushed me towards the ban as well. And I I wasn't sure that I was gonna go there, but I feel like that's, after the testimony today, that's where I feel like I'm at. So. You're ready for, to make a motion then? Unless any commissioners have any further comments, I, I think that's where we're at. 
Mr. Chairman, I guess I have I have do have one question. Um, I want to clarify something. I want to ask Commissioner Johnson a, a quick question. So, um, with regards to um, your comment about uh, having the, the current permits expire, is it at that time? Is 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 your were your comments related more to uh, modifying, uh, revising NAC so that there's a ban on it, or to leave it in the department's hands to make that call based on the biology? I, I think there's two options. One is obviously part of what I was saying is the permits that have been issued, they'll run their course. That way we don't have an issue of revocation and due process considerations in that. Uh, they were issued. That, you know, I think ultimately perhaps we do do the regulation, but as I read it now, I think the direction we can just give to the department to cease the issuance of com uh, commercial reptile collection permits in the state of Nevada. And I suspect that the department would follow that guidance. Um, I don't even know in reading the statute if the commission even has to do that because then when I look at the statute, it's almost like the department could do that now. But I think what we need to do as a commission is say to the department, you have our support because we don't want the commercial collection permits issued anymore. I, I appreciate that. And I think that that's, that's kind of why I was asking is, uh, you know, are, are we taking a stand on the, the, the NAC or are we, are we expressing our support and our, our expectation and support to the department, I guess, um, uh, what we would hope to see and, and that they would have our support in that sense. And, um, you know, uh, Certainly, I believe that we should go, uh, you know, to the NAC revision at some point. Um, and I'm not sure if that's for today or if that's, uh, um, if that's for another discussion. I think it could be part of a motion to just give the direction and guidance to the department under existing code and perhaps request that an agenda item in the future meeting be or come back to us with a proposed regulation that expressly bans commercial collection of reptiles in the state of Nevada. Is that a motion, Vice Chairman Johnston? I can try to, I'll, I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that this commission um, request and support the Department of Wildlife in ceasing the issuance of permits for the commercial collection of reptiles and that we initiate the regulatory process to adopt a, a regulation that bans the commercial collection of reptiles in the state of Nevada. I second that. I have a motion by Commissioner, Vice Chairman Johnston and a second by Commissioner Hubbs. Is the commission clear on the motion? We'll call for the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. And one. Okay. So motion passes six to one with Commissioner Valentine voting no. With that, we'll close agenda item number 25. And I think, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that's in need for some lunch. So we're going to take a lunch break until two o'clock. <laughs>